All right, hey everybody, John Paducak here. Got Ted Wasco and our special guest. Who is it? Who is it, Paul? John? Paul Jenkins. Hey. Hey. <laughs> All right, hey, Mr. Jenkins, and today we're going to talk about Udemy. And you know, Udemy is been a big topic lately. I mean, yesterday we watched uh, Udemy get sixty-five million dollars in funding, and we're seeing people like, um, yeah, you know, I almost said. Because Ted went to see Robert Kiyosaki today. I almost said Robert Kiyosaki. No, not Robert Kiyosaki. Guy Kawasaki. It does kind of sound like that, right? And, of course, you know, we're seeing people like that and Seth Godin. We're seeing a lot of people moving in and setting up courses, aren't we? So that's what we're going to talk about today. And um, Paul, of course, major league expert in that area. And uh, we watched him do some pretty, pretty tremendous things with Udemy. So, hey, with no further ado. I was just going to say. What makes Paul an expert? Paul, tell us why you're an expert. <laughs> why am I an expert? Um, actually, it's all bluff. It, it, the, 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 the expertise is bluffing. You know, if you don't know how to bluff well in life, you know, you can't be an expert at anything, Ted. That's my, that's my own philosophy. <laughs> but actually, you know what I mean? I was going to say, now tell them the truth. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> put, up, put up the subtitles. No, it's, it's it, I mean, you know, I, I actually went on to Udemy about six or seven months ago. And, um, and in fact, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of weird to hear the word expert associated with myself and, and, and Udemy because I'm, really I'm a film director. And that's, my, that's, my, that's my thing, really. But, but the thing is that I think I am becoming a bit of an expert on Udemy because, you know, I just I, I go into the damn thing every bloody day. Okay, I mean, it's, it's basically, you know, first thing in the morning, I get out of bed, and the very first thing I do is log into the Udemy Studio, Udemy Faculty Lounge, check on the courses, check on the feedback. I've got my own uh, Facebook group on Udemy running now. We've, we've just crossed 150 members, very, very active. And um, the news yesterday, actually, that, that John just mentioned, I mean, that, that has reinforced the fact that this is an ecosystem in takeoff. You know, this is a little bit like being at Kindle when, you know, perhaps, I mean, yeah, the day after Kindle first announced it was going into business, basically, you know. And um, so it's a very, very exciting time to, 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 to be in it. And, yeah, basic, basically, I would encourage anyone who's listening to this call to at least give Udemy a try right now. I mean, like, not in, not in a month's time. Get in, get in now, basically. Uh, oh, yeah. But yeah. All, all those who don't quite know what it is, could you explain what it is and what you can do on there and what you can put on there, etc.? Yeah. Well, I mean, the very first thing to, to address is whether it's pronounced Udemy or Udemy, and the truth is that no one knows. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not me. Uh, so I'm sure someone in in the depths of San Francisco, know, you know, knows the answer perfectly well. But no, Udemy, Udemy basically is a it's a course platform, and I believe they now have seven million uh, students inside their platform. They they're the largest online course platform online. Uh, they are way ahead of all the other course platforms in terms of the, the way in which the Alexa rankings are, are climbing away. And that 65 million bucks is certainly going to help them go, you know, accelerate away from the others quite rapidly, I would say. Um, it's a very lively course platform. They have, I think it's now about 14,000 instructors, something like that. Uh, I, I lost count of the number of courses they have. And essentially, it's a kind of done-for-you marketing kit in the sense that you basically create the content, you create the videos, you get it up there, it, the landing page and the squeeze page, the, 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 you know, the, the, um, the, the buy button, all of that stuff is all integrated inside the platform. So essentially what it means is that the only thing you need to worry about is the content that you create. I mean, of course, there are there is stuff beyond that, but but it's a very, very easy way to get information products and courses up online. That's, in a nutshell, it's that. Yeah, especially for the, the folks that are kind of not as technically inclined. And, yeah. of course, you know, it just, um, the, the courses are really nice. And I think they're, would, would you say or would you tell other people, they're probably more video-oriented as well. Yeah, I mean, I think actually Udemy, Udemy. Uh, we, we've got to settle on one of these two, haven't we? <laughs> but Udemy, let's go for Udemy. Um, right. Udemy, I think, have been quite smart here because by insisting that, I think their rules are that 60% of the course's content has to be video, 
and I believe that they insist on a minimum of half, of half an hour of course content, which in effect means that at least 20 minutes of your course has to be video. And I th the reason why I think this is smart <coughs> is that actually creating very long reports or something that's going to sustain interest over written material or simply slide material or what have you, or audio material, is actually very, very hard, you know, to actually to, to keep it going. But essentially by creating video lectures, you can actually give a very high degree of apparent value. You know, of course, value shifts around the courses. But what it means is it lowers the barrier to entry for anyone to come in and create a course. So, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, if you enjoy walking your dog down the park every every Tuesday morning, you could literally do a course on Udemy about, well, you know, this is the best way to walk a dog in a park. You know, quite, I mean, very, very literally, you know. Um, I, I'm perhaps using a slightly facetious example. But but the point is that by by enabling video as the primary thing, first of all, they're setting themselves away from a number of other information product uh, platforms, perhaps, you know, and certainly, obviously, there's a big difference between them and Kindle, for example. But, but secondly, they, they absolutely have opened the door to all and sundry to come in and basically teach, yeah? So so it's, I think it's one of the reasons why the, why the platform is taking off. And I was going to say, you know, even, even though that is kind of a facetious example, you're right, but, um, you know, we're seeing more and more people doing stuff on... Uh, you know, with their phones, phone video, yeah. Yeah. and uh, you know, with the with the quality of cameras and everything today, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's pretty easy to do. And yeah. uh, I was it, watching stuff the other day you were doing from the park in France, and it was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I for example, with myself, I, I I've I, I've got eight courses up on Udemy now, and uh, I've got about uh, I think it's about four thousand, four and a half thousand students, something like that, and. I'm planning quite literally to put out dozens and dozens and dozens of courses now. You know, I'm a filmmaker, I know about video and film, and I sat back and I thought, well, you know something, I could do a course on composition, a course on shutter, a course on, a course on you know, color, a course on dynamic composition, a course on, you know, how to use film for in business, how to use film in hobbies, how to film your dog, how to film your cat, how to, I mean, it just goes on forever. Because once you find a central area around which you can circle your expertise or, you know, what you're passionate or interested in, you can keep niching out the, the Udemy courses in that way, I think, to, to great advantage, yeah? That's certainly one strategy that can be, can be followed on, on Udemy. So therefore, yeah, really, I mean, virtually anyone who's got a, you know, some kind of expertise or passion in some sort of area could, could come into that platform and start creating something and start making money. You know, and internet marketers obviously have a have a big advantage because they, they already understand about targeting, about audiences, about how to market, about how to write copy, about how to, you know, to, to position things basically to appeal to an audience. So I imagine that quite a lot of people on, on your call are very, very well, you know, positioned actually to um to to move into Udemy and uh, at least use it as a as a as an additional business, if not if not uh, a primary business. Exactly, and, and smaller yeah. courses versus larger courses. I mean, is there an advantage to starting small, or is there an advantage to having a larger course there? What were your thoughts on that? You know, I th I um, I probably shouldn't admit this, but I like you guys, and so <laughs> I'll tell you if you see. We do this to Paul all I, the time. You do this to me all the time. It's, it's quite <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, oh, my yeah. first my first Udemy course, I, I did one on how to do video interviews, and the course that ended up being a kind of four or five hour masterclass. It just I just went through every every goddamn you know issue and perspective on video interviewing you could imagine, right? And the course took me about two weeks to make because you know I had to record all the damn stuff, color correct it, put it through the editing, get it up into Udemy, you know, da 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 da. Um, these days I knock out a course in half a day. I mean, start to stop. And what I've settled in on as the way to do things is what I call iterative course making. In other words, to put up the minimum viable course, to record it very, very quickly, get it up, get it up into Udemy, see the reaction, and then, you know, if people are starting to like it, keep revisiting it and keep building out the course, which has the additional advantage that you actually increase your organic ranking inside the Udemy platform because the courses seem to be active and you are seen to be active the students love you to bits because they're getting extra value beyond which you know they, they they originally got and so on and so forth. So to answer your question, I think actually 
These days, I would probably go for shorter courses, actually, ones that basically test out the particular niche or the particular subject you're putting up, the particular sales page you're putting up, and so forth. You know, get it up as fast as possible, test it out, see the reaction, and then, then build up. Yeah. Paul, your mm. video course, does it teach people to look into the camera when they're speaking? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's such a beautiful evening here in Paris. You know. <laughs> Actually, you know, it's quite funny. But I, I, I saw, um, I saw a couple of courses uh, up there on pre on presenting. And I saw one where someone was actually advocating that you deliberately look out of the lens now and again in order to appear more natural and relaxed. And and another one that was actually quite literally teaching people to do the kind of Shakespearean thing where you would look at an object in your hand in order to focus attention on it. And I was going to say that kind of leads in, you know, today we're using the Showcase app and so those of you watching and viewing here, you'll be able to see in the Showcase app that, um, you know, Paul has uh, generously offered uh, 200 copies of his video quick start course so you can actually look at an Udemy course. Mm -hmm. And we also have um, Paul's uh, Ultimate Udemy Profits course listed here in the Showcase app. So do take yeah. a look at those as we're moving along or after the call. So yeah. just so you guys know it's there. Yeah. Actually, the, the, the freebie is, um, it's, I, I'm calling it Promo Video Quick Start. And it's big because I, it, it's quite hard for people to get in front of a camera and just basically deliver an authentic, you know, natural, engaging and at the end of the day something that's going to sell something right uh, and and to do it to do it in the right kind of way so yeah it's it's, it's one of the latest courses I put up there it took um, you know, as I say it was created pretty rapidly but <laughs> it's getting some nice feedback so yeah I'd encourage you I'd encourage you uh, you know your viewers to dive in and grab that because actually if you're making sales videos promotional videos and if you, if you become a Udemy instructor these days, it's absolutely vital to have a great promotional video. It's really, really important because um, Udemy have changed the structure of the landing page, basically. Uh, beforehand, the, the video was not so prominent, but now it's right center, it's center stage on the landing page. And basically, if you don't have a good promotional video, your course is you know, it's going to be much harder to sell. So anyway, that's, that's the freebie. <laughs> I, I think I'll get that because I'm really scared. Yep shy in front of the camera, me. so I'll, I'll get some tips off that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we can uh, see that. Two Guinnesses and a vodka chaser, Ted. And, and it'll, <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll work perfectly. I don't know. But, um, no, I mean, quite serious, because I've, I've had to coach, I mean, literally hundreds of people through going on camera over 20 years of directing. And so, so what I've done is to barrel in that experience into that, plus, um, plus the last year or so of, of having to step in front of a camera myself, which has been a really quite kind of earth-shattering experience for me. But, you know, I've kind of learned, basically learned, learned at both ends of the lens now, which is quite, quite interesting. And, uh, yeah, teach that. And we see, I think we see more and more of that, too. I mean, even in movies, we're seeing more and more actors on both ends of the lens. Which, yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. You yeah. do see a lot more of that. Well, you go through a number of kind of psychological hurdles, obviously, you know, in terms of how you come across, and oh my God, I look so ugly, and <laughs> surely to God, people's no one's going to like this, and then, then, then you go through a series of um, kind of stages of formality into informality, and learning how to play with that, basically. Um, and there's a, no, there's a number, and, and just for even finding the right setups, for example, in your in your home or outside or whatever, to find it, to find the angles and compositions that actually really do punch through on the camera. So it's quite, it's quite, you know, it's one of those things where people think, okay, I just point the camera at myself and do a promotional video. You can, and it can work, but actually, with a little bit more planning, it's amazing how how you can actually improve it. You know, so. And, and you know, we're talking a lot about video while we're talking about Udemy, but yeah. like we said, the two really kind of go very nicely together. Uh, so yeah. I'm letting Paul stray a little off course on this. <laughs> I'll get him back on. So yeah. just give a quick yeah. run through. If somebody wants to put their own product on there, just give a basic run through the way they they can do it. Yeah. Well, I mean, the first thing is to figure out what you could actually talk about. If you had to sit down and you had to save your life by teaching something for half an hour straight off the bat, what would it be? 
that's 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 actually the quite that, that is the best question to ask yourself. You know, if I, you know, I'm in a room and someone's going to take me outside and slot me if I don't actually <laughs> I don't figure out how to actually teach something just fluidly and nicely and warmly in an engaging way so that they walk away thinking I've actually learned something here. Um, then, then, then I'm finished. And if you can figure out the answer to that, you'll know exactly what you should teach on Udemy because that will be the thing that you're knowledgeable about, you're passionate about, you feel comfortable talking about, and so forth. And I mean, almost anyone can figure out something they could talk about or teach, right? And so my advice would be start with that because in time there are other ways. And you know, in fact, in, in the Ultimate Udemy Profits um, course, I teach some ways in which you can discover profitable niches, you can discover, you know, structures and outlines of stuff that's going to work really well on Udemy. But the trick, honestly, the trick is, and I, I say this, you know, hand on heart, the real secret with, with, with Udemy is to, is to figure out very rapidly what it is that you can teach with authenticity and then get the damn thing done as quickly as possible. I mean, do it the same day if you can. Record the half hour, record the 40 minutes, record in a series of shorter lectures if you like. But get that material done, get a test video into Udemy, get the thing through the Udemy review, which takes two or three days, and get your first course up there. Because once you go past that barrier, you know, then you're away. You're off. You're an Udemy premium instructor. You can start charging money. You can put out, you know, put out a, quite a few free coupons, get some social proof, and then you can stick a price on it, and then you can start making some money. And the first sales that people get on Udemy, I mean, you see it in the Udemy studio, they're just wild with delight because, honestly, for, for quite a lot of people, it's the first money they ever made online, you know? And um, obviously, that's not necessarily all of all of the people watching this, but, you know, just to have that additional revenue stream, that passive income stream, you know, it's really, it's really worth something. Yeah, it takes uh, away, I was going to say, it kind of takes away that, um, that technical hurdle that a lot of people have to jump through of, Oh my gosh! I got to get a shopping cart together. I got to do. It. Udemy takes care of all that for you. You just create the course. Udemy is making Udemy is making me lazy, John. To be honest with you, because yeah. I mean, I've got you know, I've got value add on. I've got I've got you know, I've got God knows how many squeeze page generators. I've got you know, <laughs> I've got all of that stuff. I'm, I have a Zaxa premium account, etc., etc., etc. So I can certainly put and you know, I, I do put products out into JVZoo and so forth. But actually. These days, I like front end, front end product, front front ending products on Udemy because it's a great way to very rapidly get a get quite a quality course, get it up there, get some reaction, get some reviews, maybe think about how to iterate the course a little bit to the first or second iteration, the first or second you know development of the course, and to the point where I think, yeah, actually, you know what, this this will probably work in JVZoo, or I can get some affiliates behind this. So it's you know. The idea that you can basically very rapidly get a get a selling product up onto a platform that now has seven million uh, clients on it, and is adding clients at the rate of sit down one million extra clients every month right now, okay? I mean that's you know the amount of traffic coming through this platform is just just enormous. So again, if you can crack the organic ranking code inside Udemy, obviously that's that's pretty pretty damn interesting. But 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 anyhow, the, the idea that you can get a you know an information product up, up into such a lively platform and get some real market reaction to that and you know and so forth so rapidly and easily before perhaps taking it out to Warrior Forum, JVZoo, using all this other stuff that we're so familiar with. Is uh, yeah, is seriously interesting. And, and expanding and, that and all those things too. Sorry. And expanding it out, you know, it, you test something and say, "Wow, this is worth moving a little more and expanding out on." Yeah, 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 yeah. I love the, I love the fact you can test ideas up on it. Frankly, that's 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 one of the very best things about it. Um, you know, there's a sense in which, and I'll, I'll phrase this delicately, but there's a sense in which um, Udemy is almost like a kind of um, very large hive squeeze page let me <laughs> let me explain that idea because you know in the internet marketing you know kind of theory and practice we would put up squeeze pages and we'd see conversion rates to, to after driving traffic to a squeeze page and everything else and the purpose is of course to get people onto an email list well udemy doesn't quite work, work that way you can't bring the leads directly across into your email list from udemy which is one of the reasons why i think some internet marketers don't don't engage with udemy there are ways to around that, which we may or may not go into this evening, but 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 the point being though that that you know you can put a course up on onto Udemy and you can quite literally have hundreds, if not thousands, of people coming into that course 
within a matter of days. You know, you then have an audience to whom you can then uh, send out two promotional posts a month and four educational posts a month per course, and you can mass mar you can mass email out uh, or mass email out via Udemy effectively to many thousands of people on a on a trusted delivery platform, if you like. So it's a little bit like emailing out through Amazon in the sense that the deliverability of those emails is probably actually higher than it might be necessarily if you were going through your own your own autoresponder or your own list. And it's funny you should mention that because I was going to go there next. I was going to ask you <laughs> about, yeah. you know, lot, lots of times, and we hear people feel very confined to Udemy, yeah. you know, but, you, you know, we can advertise webinars and, uh, have a Facebook community, etc., surrounding it. Yeah, to just kind of enhance the experience. So there are ways to to still keep that sense of community and not feel so confined directly to Udemy itself. Very much so. I mean, it, it's um, at the end of the day, you, one's got to be sensitive to the kind of the mores and the culture of the platform. Okay. In, in other words, you know, I mean, kind of scuzzy, scuzzy internet marketers. Please check your check your <laughs> check your hat and leave. You know? <laughs> it's just like kind of that. They, they are not going to be welcome on Udemy to just try, to try and grab the leads across by you know some sort of kind of a kind of a, a, a grab and rush out the door kind of operation. That that is not going to work, right? But what can work, as you say, are things like webinars or where where you're putting up stuff which has what Udemy would call educational value for your course inside the course. That is acceptable, basically, and so that is a way to actually draw people across to other platforms, say to a Facebook group, to a webinar, or to a series of webinars. I've seen in, uh, good instructors using, for example, newsletters at the ends of at the end of their courses, where the newsletter will have various articles inside it, plus a couple of links coming out to you know to a page or whatever, or coming out to a you know to probably not direct to a squeeze page, but certainly out to an, a page within a blog. That would have a pop-up, or would have a you know a sidebar, or something like that. So, I think the th the thing is that you know you can get a very large primary audience. And then actually, there's a kind of filtration process, whereby the people who are most keen and passionate about your stuff anyway would come through that uh, those other processes to end up finally on your list, and that's maybe not a bad thing because. You know, given the cost of autoresponders and everything else, maybe it's no bad thing if there is that kind of initial filtration process prior to people coming into your list. Uh, the point I'll pick up on is, like you said, that um, with the gurus or um, these so-called internet marketers, hmm. they will be coming on here because they'll be getting to know what's happening on here. It will probably take a little while, and it's going to be flooded. So really, this would be the ideal time for anybody who's interested in this is to get in here now. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, to be honest with you guys, I, I feel I feel that I was probably about probably about five to six months late myself, because if you look at the if you look at the other successful instructors on Udemy, you can see that some of them were in there about a year ago. They made all of the initial mistakes, you know. Basically, about a year ago, and and their income really started to take off about six months ago. So, uh, I, I already feel that I was right at you know towards the end of of the curve, frankly. But now that this 65 million has been announced, I mean, there's going to be another massive takeoff. I think you know over the next few months. So, so yeah, I mean, definitely get in now. You know, I think if I think if we if one was coming to into the platform as a new instructor, say in Five or six months' time from now, I think it really will be tough, actually, to to establish an identity and and so forth. I I disagree because it's surprising that it's what you can see of it, but it's surprising. Same with us on Hangouts. Uh, Hangouts have been going for a few years now. We got involved just over two two years ago, mm -hmm. and you would think, oh, it's all over. But it's surprising how many people haven't even heard of Hangouts, let mm -hmm. alone how to use them and what else goes with it. So, you know, you're looking at one market, but you take how many people are out there, and that they, they stumble on it. And I think it's going to keep on going. Honestly. Yeah, maybe that's a fair point, actually. I mean, I saw two figures the other day, Ted, which absolutely blew me away, which was that the estimated uh, market size for online e-learning in 2015, if I recall the figure correctly, it's something like, 139 billion US dollars. 
139 billion US dollars. And the, the market size for uh, what they call, I think it was sequential learning. So in other words, basically what happens on Udemy with a sequence of videos, you know, uh, essentially pre-recorded videos. I believe that that market size was 47 billion US dollars in 2015. Well, I mean, this is, you know, this is enormous. And I think what will happen is that a platform like Udemy eventually is, well, Udemy, in fact, do plan to move also, like Netflix, to move out into different different cultures, different uh, languages, different territories. And frankly, God forbid that Udemy fight, figure out a way to get past the Chinese firewall. Because in a situation where, <laughs> in a situation where the, you know, the, the Chinese middle class and Chinese economy is developing very, very rapidly and they need skills and they have a skills gap, can you imagine if Udemy courses start getting marketed out into the Chinese marketplace? Yeah, mm. I mean, very you know, true. That's, that's serious money, really serious money. So, you know, yeah, I mean, the, thing I, the thing I would look at would be, would be Kindle. I mean, Udemy referred to the parallel with Netflix, but actually I would draw more the analogy with Kindle because what Kindle did was to allow everyone to become a, an author. You know, prior to Kindle, You'd be sending your manuscript around 50 publishers and not be get not not even be able to get not even get a polite response. You know, Kindle comes along, you can have a book up by Tuesday of next week. You know, <laughs> and uh, so I, I I see an analogy there actually. Yeah, because Udemy is allowing everybody to be a course producer. Yeah, totally. Very yeah. very quickly, very easily, um, without a lot of upfront work to do that, without really having to overthink uh, yeah. a lot of yeah. the you know the funnel. Of yeah. It. yeah, yeah. Uh, I was going to say the nice thing about it is it allows the uh, the viewers and the customers to actually sort out what are the good courses from the bad courses. Yeah, exactly. Well, actually, to 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 come back to your earlier question about you know how someone gets started and so forth, I would say literally get an envelope. Okay, uh, divide it into three. Uh, section number one, what am I going to teach? Section number two, what value am I going to give? And importantly, section number three, what is the style in which I'm going to teach this course that's going to be engaging? Okay, Because um, if you think about it, would you want to follow the course? Would you actually be into it? Would you be with it? Right? Um, this might sound a bit rough, but these days I see a lot of courses where there's a lot of value inside the course where the instructor certainly knows their stuff but you know it's slide after slide after slide after slide and frankly it's dull as ditch water and I'm not convinced that that style is going to persist and succeed in in the next evolution of Udemy so I think people need to be thinking more in terms of yeah putting yourself in front of the lens they need to be thinking more in terms of what are the visuals that, that you're going to be using inside your presentations. What are indeed what are what is the, what is the what is the you know either video or or you know striking images or stock services or Pixabay or whatever it might be. But you know th this kind of the, the the kind of endless death by PowerPoint. I'm I'm not convinced it's going to survive. Nor am I convinced it's going to survive in the in the mobile marketplace where something like 40% of Udemy courses I believe are consumed. Because you know if you're looking at an Udemy course on an iPhone. Are you really going to want to be trying to read the bullet points, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, so so I, I would say, yeah, people. But it, it, it's an it's a very interesting kind of environment like that, where I think it's going to evolve very fast in terms of the the feeling of the courses that are going up there. Yeah, and you got to have some visuals, of course, because you know everybody's got a different learning style, so you got to take that into account. But I, I think you're right. I mean, we see the same kind of thing here, where. You know, so many people are afraid to get their face out in front of the camera, and yeah. it's so important because doing that really attracts people to you. I mean, they, they see you on camera, and it's like, wow, you know, I like Paul. I like John. I like Ted. Yeah, These are exactly. guys that are real that I can, you know, learn from, yeah, and, exactly. and it's hugely important. So, I was, was going to say, I, I actually did a testimonial, a testimonial, a interview with somebody yesterday. Uh, and that was on Skype, and I hated it. I honestly hated it because it was okay. It was good interview, gave good content and everything. Well, I thought it was good in here, <laughs> but um, you c couldn't see the expression. And you know, when I was answering, because I'm a person that uses hands, as you probably notice, and my face and the eyes will light up when I'm really passionate about something. And that's what's missing out: are slides or just audio and that. Um, I don't think that you can beat video to actually get to know somebody and what they're like, whether they're passionate. 
um, mm -hmm. and how much enthusiasm they're putting into what they're saying. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, 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 it's an energy game, I, I think, you know, in, in, in the, you know, I don't want to sound too kind of California West Coasty and all that, but you know, actually, it is a transference of energy when you when you teach something on a on a camera. You know, I mean, it's you're putting. It, okay, I will sound West Coasty now. You know, teach from the heart. You know, basically, because if you're teaching, if you're teaching from here, or if you're if you're just certainly if you're teaching with money in mind, just forget it. It ain't going to work on video. It, it absolutely has to be coming from here. You have to want to be sharing something that actually will help people who are looking at the course and the acid test is uh, and it's this is tricky actually when when you're a film director like me where you have to look at your own edits and your own cuts and you might go through several weeks of editing and then you look at a you look at the first rough cut for example and you have to be able to be dispassionate about your own work in video or film is actually super difficult right and it's also true in course creation but it is important to just have that reality check and, and look at the stuff and think. Actually, you know, would would I actually stay with this? Would I would I actually watch this for more than a minute or two and stay with it and be drawn into it, engaged by it? And if the answer is no, for God's sake, don't persist. <laughs> you know, find another way to, uh, you know, to, to 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 do it. Find a way to spice up your video presentation. You know, it's uh, to get it to get it to work. I, I would definitely agree with that. But the only one thing is, the more you do the more critical you would get of yourself. And that's the um, thing that you got to watch out for. And get that line to not be overcritical. Same as when you're producing a course and that. You'll get you'll get it up to a certain standard and then you think, oh no, I need to do this, I need to do that. And it never goes out. You're better yeah. off putting something up and then keeping improving on it. I completely agree with that. I mean, actually, in, in, in the way I teach people, I say, look, you know, to start with, when you're getting of that initial hurdle of putting yourself in front of a camera and, and recording stuff, by all means, use a webcam and do some takes and see how you come across and just improve your style. But when you actually get down to, to teaching the stuff you're going to teach on camera, you know, if there's fluffs, ums, errs, you lose your train of thought, you re-catch something, the logics are scrambled, who cares? Get it, get it done, get it up there, get it, get it, get it out there, you know. And actually, people like, I've actually found people feeding back in reviews now who actually say, because I had one, I've, I've had one three-star review out of 60 reviews. I think the other 59 reviews have been five-star reviews for me, right? And, and I've had one guy say, no, I wasn't very happy because it wasn't structured learning. People now are feeding in saying, actually, we absolutely love all this kind of complex teaching, you know, highly condensed and whatever. And... You know, when you find your style, you find your pace, you know, you find what you're comfortable with, and you find what you really feel, you know, people deserve to learn, actually. You know, just put it out there, yeah. And, and the fluffs do not matter. They're kind of the, you know, they lose all of that, you know. <laughs> uh, I, when John and I had started, I mean, say, we did some hangouts there, and we thought they were absolutely great. But when we've gone back to them, we did. We go, we go. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the other thing, we've been condemned um, by a few people by our presenting style. But we present as we are. We don't try to be somebody we're not. And uh, we make things fun, as you know. And we always pull out of people the best. You know, we have that knack. And you know that. Of We pick up on something and get you to go that little bit further that you weren't going to say. Of course, yeah. Yeah, and we exactly. look at it too from the point that we've just weeded out our not so ideal clients. Yeah. So you know that that's kind of the way you got to look at it. You know, we're always going to get rejected a little bit somewhere, and uh, that's not so bad. That's it. That actually can be a positive thing. But well, hey, uh, I, I, yeah, I, just on that one quick note. Sorry to interrupt, yeah. but um, that is the thing. We have had so many people come to us and say, you know, they've taken our courses and everything. They said, we really like you guys. You're so down to earth. You're like us. And we said, well, we are. The only difference is we're what makes us an expert on something or anybody is because we've gone that further, we've studied mm -hmm. it, we've looked into it, and we know how things work. And yeah. everybody's an expert at something. But that's the only reason. But they love our style, most of the people. Exactly. Actually, I think it's worth um, p passing something on here, which I, I learned comparatively recently. And I think, it, I think it's an absolute bullet when it comes to to doing anything actually uh, in online business, which is this this idea of this idea of, of kind of you know value 
you know, how much value does something actually have? And you know, would you put the same thing out, for example, in an Udemy course that might get discounted to ten dollars that you would put out in a coaching session for which you might charge a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars or whatever it might be? And and it was a really interesting point that um, by uh, I'll credit him actually by a guy called Alan Boyer, who's a uh, he, he coaches other coaches in in the states. He's a, a he's a, a coach of coaches, and his point was that actually every single thing you put out there should have the same value in the sense that you're going to get you're going to get the person who's receiving that product to the same result. The difference the difference in price will be that it to do with the rapidity um, or the ease with which the person attains the result. But the actual ambition of the of the product should be that you're getting the person to that same end result. And and for me, that was a very, very powerful uh, uh, kind of insight because it meant that when teaching Udemy courses, that, that actually you don't hold back, right? You just you just give whatever you've got to give. You give you give a fantastic amount of value. you give every insight and piece of value you possibly can inside that course at the time you're doing it. The course might be, hey, I mean, I'm doing half an hour or 40 minute courses now, so I'm actually calling my courses quick start courses because you know the idea is a whole bunch of front end courses that you know whatever. But the point is that I that I'm absolutely not in any shape, sense, or form trying to constrain what I'm giving there in order to give more in, a, in some kind of upsell, not at all. You know, it, uh, it's going straight out there onto the course and knowing that people who perhaps come further on the journey and might say hi me as a coach or, or buy, you know, some other kind of upsell from me, you know, are going to do it because they've engaged with that, you know, with all of that value inside the front end, if, if that makes sense. It yeah. does because that was the, the thing they used to say. Give as much value as possible, like you said. And that person said, wow, all this value for, say, $7 or whatever it is. Yeah. And he's got another course for, for 40 cents. What's going to be in there? You know, people yeah. pay, 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 get really excited about it because you're giving them really good value and they're learning from it. That isn't another shiny object that suddenly appeared that they'll, mm. they'll get because they've been told to get, look at it, and put to one side and wait for the next one to come along. Mm. They learn from it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say a good friend of mine just said that recently too. It's not it's not about the information itself, but the conciseness of the information as you go up in product line. So yeah, yeah. yeah so the exact same thing. So yeah. I mean, the other thing that always strikes me is that is is the thing that I think it was Frank Kern was coming out with a few a few months ago. Uh, he was saying that people don't people aren't really interested in information so much as they are in insights. Yeah, you know, that that also really resonated with me because we're bombarded by information. You can get information any day of the week, but but actually, if you're giving people insights into the information, how they can you know really apply it, or how they, you know you're giving them that clue on that those little keys on how they could actually grab this and actually plug it into their own thing and, and get ahead. You know, that's that's uh, that's magic, I think. So yeah, I have to so joke. Like, with, I was gonna say I often joke with Ted that there's shortcuts in our course that uh, are worth. Almost the price of the course itself. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. If you if you can jump if you can jump people, you know, way ahead. I mean, you're bringing years of experience into into something. And you're you're just taking someone way past all of that hard grind, you know, and, and putting them ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Well, John, John will tell you there was uh, one particular course that we were helping out on, um, and people were getting confused, and we were helping. And the times that people said to us they learned more being with us in about two hours than they had looking at the course and trying to figure out, and they spent hours and hours. And they said, you turn it around and you make it so easy to learn and do. Mm. Yeah, so yeah. definitely something to keep in mind. But hey, I want to mm. I want to kind of wind up a little bit. Can you guys believe we've been talking about this for 40 minutes? No. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> but the nice thing is we, we all gel together here and we're all passionate mm. about what we're talking about. Now, Absolutely. Oh, it's, a great su it's a great subject. So uh, with that in mind, you know, obviously I want to mention to the audience, if you guys have further questions that you'd like to ask Paul or us, um, you can do that in the event chat. We'd be glad to get to them and, and answer them for you. Um, I just want to wind up. We'll talk. We'll go through kind of our usual final thoughts from you guys um, since Paul's our, our guest. I'm going to start with Ted and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then Paul and then I'll wind it up and 
kind of finish it off. So there you go, Ted. Final thoughts. Oh, okay, my th final thought is, can anybody guess where I've been today? <laughs> <laughs> but apart from that, um, no, final thoughts. Video is here. It's only going to get better. If you can start getting on video, especially now that the broadband speeds are coming up and you can produce stuff yourself and there's, there's so much there that helps you. You haven't got to spend half a day trying to load something up and it fails and you've got another half a day to do it. It, it can be done. Uh, you know, so if something goes wrong, don't worry about it. Just redo it, and it will be there. But definitely go on video. One way or the other, go on video and su support that with PDFs or audio um, to really make your course stand out. Paul? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, there's the saying that um, everyone in their life should um, plant a tree, build a house, and write a book. So let's adapt that. Everyone in their life should plant a tree, <laughs> write a book, build a house, and do a Udemy course. We're now on the 3rd of, uh, what are we, on the 3rd of June, right? It's Wednesday. So basically, I'd like everyone to write down, I will make a Udemy course by next Wednesday. <laughs> so it's, a call to, it's, a call, it's a call to action, everyone. I mean, just, just do it. Get in there. Excellent. Excellent. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited about this, too, Paul, because I look at this, and we've been talking a lot about Udemy over the last couple of, oh, gosh, months since you really started getting involved with it. And what a great way to create a course. It takes a lot of the, the obstacles that most people have out of the way of doing that. I mean, you don't even have to promote your own course, for crying out loud. Udemy can do that for you. So, I mean, that's pretty unbelievable in itself, and so many groups and everything else along the way to, to support you. So um, can't say enough about it. Can't be more thrilled to have you on as our first uh, live guest for for the uh, the Hangcast. And uh, just so you guys know, Hangcasting Made Easy is our new course that's coming out. And you can follow the uh, podcast as it takes off. It's at learnturnandearn.com. And uh, you can follow it on Twitter, uh, twitter.com learnturnearn, or on Facebook, facebook.com learnturnearn. And uh, we'll see you guys, and you'll be able to see our episode shortly on iTunes as well within the next week. So look forward to... Uh, having many, many more of these. And Paul, thank you so much for being our first guest, and thank you guys for watching. So bye for now, everyone. Bye.